So let's briefly recap what's going on in this world. So right now the Western Hemisphere is, is almost unified into maybe four or five major powers. There's, there's the middle where, you know, obviously you have Bulgaria, you have Mali in the south, you have Australia, and then the east was just a complete mess. They all have a lot of, of military units, but they need to unify. Someone needs to take over that region or else I, I don't think they're gonna be able to stand up to both the Philippines, Canada, and well, I mean, I, sh I should say all three, even Vietnam, because they're all extremely powerful. And you know, this is actually a perfect time to kind of overview the political map mode. I think it looks really, really good because almost every single tile, almost every single tile, uh, there are a few uncolonized, um, I guess, units or tiles, I guess, uh, not units, uh, tiles over in the east, but uh, in the west, it's... It's as you can as you can see, very very unified. Uh, Vietnam holding the most amount of cities controlled in this world. Uh, just north is the Philippines, and they control five. They're second. Um, and, and just to clarify, Vietnam controls seven. So yeah, Afghanistan is kind of a, a smaller nation in the region. They're trying to hold on. I think that the Philippines are somewhat peaceful. Um, I mean, well, they did just, you know, completely almost wipe out a tribe, and then they banished them all the way up to the north here, but, um, I, I, I feel like they did that because of some, you know, it was a reaction to an already aggressive move. I, maybe they, I don't know, I, I'm not exactly sure, you could argue that it was kind of good, like, they, you could, you could argue their side, is what I mean, the, the Philippine side of, of, of declaring war, and, uh, and taking over a few cities from these guys. Afghanistan really hasn't done much. They've played pretty peaceful, and they seem to be friends with uh, the Philippines and Canada. Uh, Vietnam, a lot of the world does not like. Um, I believe that also, I think Vietnam is still at war with Mali. I don't think they ever let them peace out because Mali seems to be a really weakened sieve. Uh, the Goths seem to be like they might be potentially on the chopping block because Bulgaria needs something to do. And Bulgaria has kind of become a city-state almost in, in, in a weird way where... Bulgaria had this weird opportunity the entire time to eliminate Vietnam and they didn't do it And it's so weird because now they are in a super tough sp spot I think they're gonna declare war on the Goths at some point uh, Maybe getting a little bit of Finland's help Australia has been quiet, but they've been friendly with someone like the from you know Canada as well as the Philippines And then like I said, I mean the eastern part of this world is just a complete mess And it's really I don't think it has really any sort of opportunity to unify because there's just so much raw power in this area. I mean, there's a lot of nations like Iceland that could probably, you know, keep up with it with an offensive attack from either Canada, Philippines, or, or Vietnam. Obviously, they're in a very lucky spot uh, where they probably won't have to face some of those foes in the West, but they might have to take on multiple enemies in the East, like Hungary, like the Papal State, uh, like Brussels, you know, like uh, Belgium, I should say. I mean, even, even Prussia's still around. They might be left with only their capital, but they still have units, and they have musket men. You know, they have updated units somewhat, you know, crossbowmen. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's they're, I mean, it's just kind of a mess over here. So I don't know if you want to be unified right now. It's going to take these civs a little bit longer of time, I think, to get really strong, um, only because they just took on, they just took on a whole lot more cities than they originally started out with. Well, I mean, Vietnam, it's been a while since Vietnam has controlled this, but they really need to, it's, it's going to ramp up, you know, cities for the AI tends to be slow growth, but at some point, yeah, they will probably get a little bit stronger than these, uh, Eastern nations. So the Eastern nations got to get their stuff together. They got to go. Uh, if you're rooting for anyone in the East, um, you gotta, you just gotta root for a war to break out at some point, um, and, and that will hopefully break the stagnation. Because what will happen is it'll be another war between Iceland and Hungary. They're gonna lose a whole bunch of units, and then the Papal State's gonna decide, well, maybe I should go to war with Hungary, and then maybe Belgium's gonna be like, well, maybe I should go to war with Island, Iceland. You just gotta break the stagnation, and that's the problem right now. That's what we've been seeing as of the last video is is a pretty big stagnation that's going on. So, anyways, let's go to the next turn and see what happens. Uh, I, I, I don't, I think we're still going to see maybe another video of stagnation. I would be really surprised if we see a war pop up anytime soon. I, I do believe that it's going to be a relatively, uh, relatively peaceful part, uh, for a little bit. I think it's going to be, yeah, somewhat peaceful. It, it, it really depends on uh, multiple, multitude of factors right now. Um, 
I guess if one of the nations from the West does declare war on a nation of the East, then maybe we could see something break out. And I think of that Australia, it's funny because Australia is one of these very peaceful nations that I think is holding together. Like they're about the line of that separate, like the Bulgaria could kind of drop at any point. The Goths could easily fall at any point. Yeah, Mali, the same case. Um, Australia is like this middle way point where they're kind of separating any sort of power struggle from, you know, east versus west. Uh, as, as of the northern part of the Pangaea, like right in the central part of this hemisphere, um, it's kind of divided, you know. I think that technically right now the Philippines could go after Hungary if they have open borders through the Gothic territory. Uh, Canada could definitely break out a war and, and spread over offensively towards towards the, the east, but as of right now, my feelings are I don't think that Canada or the Philippines are going to be that aggressive. I don't think they're going to want to do that sort of thing. Um, it, but it really it really depends on, on uh, a few factors. Like I said, Hungary and Australia have signed a research agreement, as well as Finland and Champa have signed a research agreement. Man, I really was rooting for Champa. I thought they would have a really good game. I'm shocked that they haven't. I'm shocked that they really haven't done much right now. You know, Finland actually could maybe break out the stagnation going after Antwerp um, because they wouldn't have to worry about Brussels. They don't border Brussels. They could go straight after Antwerp, and that would be, boom, gone like that. That would be very quickly um, dropped and in, you know, integrated into Finnish territory right away. So we have Vietnam denouncing Iceland. Interesting. We also have um, Vietnam who is this? Who are you plotting against? Oh, the Goths. Okay, yeah. There seems to be a mul uh, multiple people plotting against the Goths right now. What was I going to check? I wanted to double check on... Well, let's check global uh, relations. Are there any more wars that are currently going on? So there are actually a few more wars going on. So there's still a huge coalition against uh, Vietnam. I forgot about that. There's still actually a, 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 just a bunch of things that are going on. It just seems like... You know, nothing, nothing in terms of, like, proximity wars. There's no proximity wars happening. Uh, Canada still hasn't pieced out. Neither has um, Bulgaria in the uh, in new tribe. So, and, and the new tribe is, is, is banished. And it's kind of funny. I, I'm really interested to see how they're going to do uh, up in their lone island in the snow. Uh, this is where they're supposed to strive, honestly. So, um, we'll see. We don't have any more spies? Still nothing? Hmm. Okay. Uh, Vietnam and Bulgaria have uh, made a declaration of friendship, as well as we have Vietnam has publicly denounced Iceland, and Canada and Belgium have signed a research agreement. Oh, and there goes Canada. This is solidifying. This is a really, re again, a very smart move by Canada. Uh, they've founded Toronto, just north of, of the Philippines. If you really think about it, the only way that a diplomatic victory could be stopped by, you know, by anybody else is if Canada gets completely wiped out. It's really, really, like, very close. Canada's really, really close to a win here. They are very, very close. They already have 11. They currently have 11 delegates. Now, who knows what's going to happen with the ideology system? You know, they might lose some of those alliances, um, which is what I'm, you know, kind of assuming. They've got a lot of alliances currently, but, you know, when ideologies start to break out, I'm sure they're going to lose some friends. They might also gang some friends. Right now, Canada just needs to stay alive. And right now, with their empire, currently just uh, Montreal, Kingston, and uh, Ottawa. Ottawa? Ottawa? Uh, they can easily kind of get just rolled over. These three cities, I mean, not easily. I shouldn't say easily. They have units to defend themselves. But if they have to face a massive coalition, it's definitely possible for the AI to take these cities over pretty fast. But sell selling Toronto up north is a really, really smart idea. And again... You know, the Canadians have a, an awesome fleet to defend Toronto. So that, and, and like I said, I mean, the only way to defend against a diplomatic victory would, to be, would to be to completely eliminate every single Canadian city. Afghanistan and Australia have made a declaration of friendship. So uh, again, they might be solidifying a possible victory. We're still a ways away because I don't think they can even start to vote anytime soon. I'm pretty sure we have to get to a certain part. Uh, there's no way I don't think they're going to win without us moving further in the eras um we need to we i think something i mean the world congress needs to be upgraded i think to the either the final stage or something like that to even begin the world congress vote the world leader vote so they could have the amount of delegates to win but if we're not in the world leader voting stages then it's fine the game's going to continue to go on so anyways uh we have who is this who are they playing against Oh, the Philippines. Oh, my gosh. Now, that is going to be the war of this world. Uh, that will be the most epic war of this world. And actually, you know what? The Philippines seem like they might be lacking a little bit of troops. 
it seems like actually a lot of people are looking at the Goths and, and, and wanting to go after them. Uh, we have Hungary and Bulgaria in a declaration of friendship, as well as Canada and Champa. Champa declaring a research agreement. Belgium and Mali are now friends. That's good for Mali. Mali needs some something going on here. There's another Belgian sett settler. There's really not that much more room, though. I don't know where that guy's going to go. I mean, who knows? This is going to be interesting because there's not much room left for the AI. So I want to see... Ooh, what is this? Okay, not a big deal. Canada, again, going after... That. Wow, Canada's really aggressive. I thought they were going to piece... Actually, you know what? This, uh, this might be a really bad move, now that I think about it, for Canada. This might be really, really bad. If they take over the Anu tribe, they're going to destroy them off the world, and they're going to get some heavy diplomatic implications from that move. Um... Wow. Yeah, no, this could be really bad. They they have some boats over here, and they're actually approaching slowly. I don't think they have the Navy to do it just yet. Uh, they'll, they'll probably bring some stuff over one by one. Now, Smarkland, I believe, is in, involved in this. If Smarkand, I'm sorry, uh, Smarkand, if, if they are the ones to take over this final Inuit city, then I don't think it's... It's not going to, that's obviously that penalty is not going to go for Canada. Uh, although we might see some denouncements begin to happen. Goss and Bulgaria, uh, friendship, Belgium and Champa, Australia and Champa, Canada and Australia, friendship, and the Philippines and Bulgaria. Okay, that's very smart. So uh, people are, the Philippines and Bulgaria making this kind of, ooh, someone else might be going for it instead. Philippines allying themselves with Bulgaria is really, really smart because this is a very vulnerable um, part in this world, and they don't want it to fall to the Vietnamese. Um, as you can see, the Vietnamese troops are approaching. They want to take over this, like, almost, you know, very easy... I, I don't think it'd be an easy city to take, but it would be... Uh, it would be interesting to watch that sort of thing. Vietnam has uh, pieced out with, it looks like, Hungary and the Champa Kingdom. I don't know. I think that war could break break out soon. I don't. I, the AI does not do death defensive packs, and I'm wondering if there's a mod for that because we really need to look for some sort of uh, mod for these AI only battles to have bigger wars. Maybe offensive. There's got to be an offensive alliance mod where, like, if you're friend, if you're in your friendship, then you call in automatically your alliances. There's got to be that mod. I gotta look for that because that's gonna make this so much more exciting. But um, very smart move by the Philippines, allying themselves with Bulgaria, keeping hopefully the city a bit longer, a bit safe. Um, they, uh, they're still at war with Afghanistan, but Afghanistan is extremely lucky, um, hidden around only one tile of access. So Vietnam's probably not gonna be able to do much against Afghanistan. I'm sure Vietnam's probably trying to plot against Mali. Mali doesn't have much of many range units protecting their capital or even a navy at that uh, at that rate. But still, there's only a few nations besides Philo the Philippines themselves that Vietnam can go to war with. And I don't think that really now's the time. I I'm, I'm pretty sure Vietnam's not thinking, well, yeah, let's go ahead and break out this huge war against the Philippines. I think that they're going to wait on that for a bit. For a bit longer. Okay, so looks like the Anu tribe might be down to just a worker unit very soon. They're going to range hit this pikeman, and uh, that might be it. As well as we have the city state attacking from the south. Again, I, I just want to see what would happen if Canada takes over this final city. You can't tell. They would definitely, no doubt, in my mind get denounced. The problem is they have a lot of friends, so I'm wondering what would happen there. Because they have so many friends, would they let that pass? Sometimes sometimes they do. Sometimes the friends have such positive opinion of the, you know, other civ that, you know, they let a lot of that, you know, penalties for taking over people go by. So, I don't know. We'll kind of have to watch and see. They're not really sending over too many troops, so maybe they're just expecting, ooh, let's check how the, uh, the World Congress looks now. Because city states have been uh, involved. Okay, so it's not actually as much as I thought. They're only city states are only granting two per ally. So two from city states, one per ally. Two from C oh, you were getting yeah. Okay, I, I understand. Yeah, one per ally. Um, because Canada's only ally to two city states, so they still don't they still don't control that much. Uh, you would think a little bit more. So maybe they. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. They're definitely going to be able to enact whatever they want, that's for sure. Uh, but they will get two more, I believe, from becoming the host, right? Yeah, two, one, oh, only one for being the host. Oh, I thought you got two from being the host. Okay. Okay, so they'll be up to 15. Uh, again, I will, of course, abstain, so I'm not getting any sort of involvements. Philippines have denounced Vietnam. Uh-oh, Philippines have uh, Belgium, Finland, Hungary friends. 
Still lots of friendly relationships going on. Weirdly, that's weird because at, at 212, or at turn 212, you don't normally see this stuff. But then again, ideologies haven't come into play. Oh, one thing I have been wanting to check on for quite a long time now is culture victory. And not exactly just culture victory. Okay, well, it's actually not even showing us in this window here. I want to look at happiness. I'm sure they're okay. It's, it's immortal difficulty, but I do still want to check it out. So how are we doing here? Molly's at one, surprisingly. The papal state is at three. Where's Where the hell is... Vietnam is at 17, so they're doing fine. And the Philippines is right at 17 as well. So they're both doing okay. No, I thought they'd be a little bit closer. We should have checked on that happiness right when Vietnam took a crap load of, of Sioux cities. Australia and Hungary now friends. Australia and Bulgaria now friends. Everyone's allying to Bo Bulgaria. So I think this is a lot of the world trying to convince Vietnam to not attack Bulgaria. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did a war just break out? I just saw some weird thing happen. No. It looks like that. Oh, this is Canada. Oh, this is Australia. Australia finally launched their attack. This has been like, I don't know, possibly decades in the making. Australia has finally landed its army units and they're, they're actually attacking Vietnam. This might be helpful for the Philippines while the Philippines kind of rebuild their armies because right now it looks like Vietnam could roll over, completely roll over the Philippines. It, it does look like that way, that way. Although Afghanistan would somewhat help. Yeah, Afghanistan would help. Okay, so obviously uh, Canada has won this, uh, and they are at 15. Okay. They still would need nine more to win, uh, but I think we're still a ways away from any sort of World Congress leader votes or anything like that. Uh, I think that we still need ideologies. That's the thing. But who knows? I mean, they could be able to enact like just about anything. They can enact... They could enact like, well, their their empires are split up. I'm wondering what type of religion they'd want to pass through the game. But sometimes the AI is not that smart uh, where they won't, you know, a, an AI going for a diplomatic victory won't necessarily always propose, you know, things that help them like, uh, you know, world ideology or world religion or things like that. It's really strange. So the Goths and, the, uh, and Belgium have... Signed a research agreement. Still a stagnation, as I assumed, in the East. I, I mean, if these guys... I, the thing is, I don't think a lot of these nations are unified. A lot of these nations don't like each other. That's the weird thing. Uh, when ideologies come into play, that's when things are going to get pretty funny. Canada, I, I don't believe, is actually engaging the Inuit, the Inuit tribe um, in their final city, so... Maybe we won't get to see that like massive diplomatic uh, seesaw where everyone loved Canada, and then I, I had guessed that if they had taken over this final city, it would go straight back to okay, I don't like you know Mr. Pearson anymore. Um, okay, so what's happening here? We are again. They're trying to take another jab at this poor tribe that's barely just just trying to stay alive. And then the cultural heritage sites is now trying to be enacted by the Philippines. I believe that was Canada that tried it last uh, vote, but that should probably get passed. That'll probably get passed. Clearly, the AI is going for a very, you know, clear cultural victory. That's what a lot of the AIs want to do. And that's good because it's going to keep the game on for longer. Yes. Who is this? That is Iceland versus Brussels. The stagnation is over. I think the Cold War is over. We might see this eastern hemisphere of the Pangaea map completely break out. And depending on how many, who loses the amount of units here. See, what I think is going to happen, I think Iceland's going to win. Uh, what's happening here? So we have, who are you playing against? Oh, poor, come on, guys. You, do, do you really need to, uh, Vietnam? Is that necessary? Again, the cultural heritage sites was not passed. A lot of the world does not want this proposal in the world, I guess. And, of course, yeah, I just might as well just continue to dig away at them. Uh, so my prediction here is that the Icelandic army is probably going to roll through Brussels. Maybe not roll through. They're both going to lose some. Actually, you know what? This might not be... This might be... Or line, uh, like a, a very close war, I think ultimately it will kind of side for Iceland. It'll for sure, I think, bring Finland in at, at war towards Antwerp. Uh, at that rate, I think obviously if Antwerp's going to fall. Finland's going to be the one to eliminate Belgium from the game. Champa's not going to like that. Hungary is not going to like that. Iceland Br and Prussia, they're all not going to like that. And I think that's when the war uh, begins against Finland. And then it's kind of this ongoing effect from there. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, how that takes place. Let's go ahead and hit one more turn and see how this war breaks out. Oh yeah, this is going to be a tough one because, you know, Belgium is not a pushover. They actually are one of the only nations that has a significant navy as well. I'm surprised that more of these 
I, I guess more of these civs haven't built a strong fleets. Because even though it's a Pangea map, that'd be really useful in, in a kind of a game like this. Uh, anyways, guys, I can't wait to see exactly what's going to happen to this eastern hemisphere of this map. Uh, it's very exciting. Gosh, this, this campaign has just been so much fun. Uh, it's quick. Uh, but it's just been so much fun because we can really focus on the storylines. And uh, that, that to me, is always my, my favorite thing about these AI-only battles. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.